Well, good morning. Boy, I haven't heard that in like two months. That's great. Thank you very much. So it's great to see everybody, and thank you for coming and uh, sharing this time of where we could at least come together in the parking lot and uh, worship God. And again, it's great to see everybody and pray that everybody's doing well. A couple of announcements for all of us. Um, all the songs are, uh, the words are in the bulletin, so you can sing inside your car, uh, follow along that way. And just uh, want to draw your attention to the yellow sheet. We're hoping, you know, in a short amount of a couple weeks here that we'll be back inside. And these are a couple of the, the worship committee, a couple of the policies that the worship committee decided to, to, for us to look at. And I won't go over them with you, but just take a look at that. Uh, be aware of that when we're inside. Uh, again, my big thing is, is that, you know, being inside for worship is really going to be the only time for most of us that we're going to be together with more than our families and stuff like that. So it's a... Uh, can be a very contagious time. Even if you're at Home Depot with 200 people, you're spread out. Whereas the church, we're going to be much more tight. So these are some of the safeguards that we want to follow. So look at those and be aware of those uh, in the coming weeks. And we will get a session meets on the 11th, as it says in the bulletin. And we'll make that final uh, decision about when we are getting back together inside. Uh, don't forget that the BBS program is going to be online, and uh, you can. Uh, we send out uh, emails and letters about that. If you have any questions, call the office. It's something that you can do whenever you want to do it. Do it once a week. Do it, you know, three nights in a row. But on the 25th, we're going to have an after party at 7 p.m. via the Zoom, and uh, we'll get you that information. I think we already sent that out, but we'll send it out again. And it would just be a fun way for us to come together and talk a little bit about our, uh, the Bolt VBS if you're planning on doing that. Um, other announcements. Don't forget that we have online giving, and that's on our website, and you can check that out. I'll be uh, away for a couple days of... Uh, going to move John out of his dorm room finally. They're allowed to go back, so we're going to have to help him with that. And here's something I... Please join me for the call to worship. Wonderful is the God of Christ who gathers the poor of the earth. Glorious is our God who wipes away the tears of sorrow. Wonderful is the God of Christ who gives inheritance to the meek. Glorious is our God who satisfies the hunger of the just. Wonderful is the God of Christ who gives mercy to the merciful. Glorious is our God who gives vision to the pure in heart. Wonderful is the God of Christ who, adop who adopts the peacemakers. Glorious is our God who lifts high the persecuted. Wonderful is the God of Christ who finds the lost. Glorious is our God. Please join us for our two hymns this morning. Beneath the cross of Jesus, and there is a re and there is a redeemer. And they're in your insert in your bulletin.
at this time, let's pause and uh, lift up our concerns and prayers uh, in silent prayer for yourself, for your joys and concerns, and, and then I'll begin to pray. Would you pray with me? Gracious and almighty God, as we come to you today in this time of worship, we thank you that uh, we can gather together. We thank you for uh, being in this place, sharing uh, our stories and our lives together. And we thank you, Lord, for your perseverance and healing and, and safety that has been a part of our days these past few weeks. We praise you for, again, the opportunity just to worship you, to be together to sing your praises, to be in your presence in this, this way. Continue to be with us, Lord, as a church, as we continue to uh, serve you, as we continue to be your voice in this world. Guide and direct us as uh, we continue to be your people. We thank you, Lord, for the way that you do provide for us. We thank you for the blessings that we have received the very simple blessings of love of family and friends, of, uh, of a home and the needs that are met, to the, the great and the big ones of uh, just the, the beauty of this creation, the, the joys that you give to us, the blessings that others have given to us each day. And Lord, we pray for guidance and directions in our own lives, for the decisions that Many of us are, are making each day, some may be life-changing, others that are, you know, smaller but yet significant. Give us your continued wisdom as we continue to walk in your way, to do your will, no matter what uh, decision that we need to make. Lord, we think of those who need your special blessings, those who uh, are recovering from operations, those who are continuing to mourn the loss of their loved ones, and... Um, we continue to lift up those families and people that we know that uh, are going through extremely difficult times. We continue to pray for uh, the people on the front line, health workers, first responders, as they deal with uh, the virus that you know, is still affecting people in many areas of our country and many people in their lives. And, we ask that your healing spirit be upon them, but also give uh, those first responders their continual strength as uh, we pray that this winds down, but also knowing that there's still uh, a lot out there. And Lord, we do pause today and, you know, in between Memorial Day and the 4th of July, and we pray for our nation, for the divisions that uh, have risen up and for the problems that uh, we face and uh, the injustice and racism and uh, abuse that goes on for uh, the integrity of uh, people who uh, want to do the right thing and um, whether they are a police officer or a protester or or somebody who uh, knows uh, that something needs to be changed we uh, pray for your wisdom on that Lord we pray for our leaders as they uh, continue to deal in so many dynamics of uh, this ongoing uh, issue that's been a part of our country from the very beginning. Guide and direct us, Lord, as your people, just where we are, as uh, we take the little steps of sharing the love of Christ in unique ways. And Lord, we continue to come to you as uh, your people here. Continue to support and guide us lead us as a church uh, in this community as we continue to be that witness to Jesus Christ, whether it's through our building and our programs and our worship, but even in uh, the way that we can continue to share as we step out in our community and in our workplaces and with our families, as we uh, become and can continue to be examples, continue as uh, we'll hear today of Peter calling us to continue to do good. We thank you, Lord, for all this. We thank you for, again, this opportunity to be with one another, to say hello, to connect uh, with our lives, but also to connect with you in this. In all this, we give you thanks in the name of Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. And give, give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And our next song is Rock of Ages. It's on our insert. So for the children's sermon out there, I uh, just want to think, want to start off by talking about in the beginning, the Bible has this story that starts off with in the beginning, and it goes through the seven days of creation. It starts off with in the beginning, God made the, the sky and the earth, and then it goes to the, the plants and the trees and the animals and the birds and the, and the bugs, and then it ends up with us. And every time God made something, God said something very important. He said, it is good. Every time he made a tree, a bug, or grass, or plants, or stars, or uh, the sky, the clouds, and us, he said, it is good. And when you think about that, that's a you know, wonderful story, and we all think it's great, and we believe that, until you find a tick on your body. Do you think about Genesis chapter 1, when you find a tick on your body, and say, it is good. Nah, you don't do that. Or when your parents put down in front of you a, a plate of broccoli, or Brussels sprouts, or for me, kale. Do you look at that and say, oh, it's good. No. Or you're deciding that you know to have an outdoors worship and it rains and thunders and lightnings. Or you want to go out and play and it's thunder and lightning. Do you stop and think, God said it is good. We kind of have this little definition that's different than God's. If God is talking about all these plants and bugs and vegetables and you know, storms and blue sky and rain and all these things in life. And he says, it is good. And yet we turn around and say, no, that's bad. Don't like that. Nope, no good. Our definitions are different. And one of the interesting things is that God said when he created us, human beings, he said, this is very good, which is interesting. Because how many times have you looked at another person and said, I don't like her. I don't like him. Yeah, he's weird. She's 
stupid. We then again go against what God said. This creation, you and I, all that God gave us is very good. So the next time you, you see a, a plate of Brussels sprouts or kale, I'll have to say kale if I see kale, or you see somebody that you don't like for whatever reason, stop before you say, ooh, and think, wait a second, God said this is good. And look at the good that is in that person or even in that kale or Brussels sprouts. Now, sorry, I don't have any candy kisses to throw out to you today, but we'll get back to that soon. And I have a note from my assistant. Vanessa has a song for us. Is it coming up? Okay. That's backwards, right? Yes, to that. Okay, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> We're new at this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, let's have a, a prayer today for the kids. God, we thank you for each one of us. We thank you that you have created us very good that you have created the sky, the trees, the vegetables, the bugs as good as well. Help us, Lord, to see how good your life and creation is in Jesus Christ. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. And we continue to pray, Lord, today for our message as we hear once again First Peter and what Peter called his church to be and to do uh, in their time when they were starting together, when they were worshiping and living for you. We pray for your wisdom and guidance in all this. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. So, our scripture today. Work it. Well, we'll make it work. Okay, we'll do this. So our scripture today is taken from 1 Peter, and notice that my iPad does not work real well in the sun. You want the umbrella? Yeah, I want the umbrella. No, thank you. No? <laughs> And our, our scripture today is from 1 Peter chapter 4, and it's just one verse, and uh, I'll tell you why we're just doing this one verse as we go on. It is, uh, again, chapter 4, verse 19. Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. That sums it up. And what I mean by that is for the past seven weeks during this pandemic, I've been preaching through 1 Peter, and one of the reasons why I thought and saw that 1 Peter would be a, a helpful book for us is that in what the early church was dealing with, and, and there's more with this. There's chapter 5 in 1 Peter. He goes through a few things, but I thought today would be a good day to kind of sum up and close off uh, this series. Because as I said a couple weeks, uh, for the last couple weeks, you know, Peter kind of tends to repeat himself. And he says, all right, here's what you need to do to deal with the problems that you're facing. Love one another, practice hospitality, compassion. You know, he kind of continuously repeats that. And he does that with the rest of the book. And I love chapter 4, verse 19, because he just kind of sums everything up in two words. Do good. Simple. You know, kind of that expression, you know, what part of do good don't you understand? And, and so I like what, you know, Peter is saying here and telling his people. And just to kind of remind us, again, what was going on in the early church. At the time that Peter was writing this, uh, the church was just starting. It was dealing a lot with the Roman culture. Christianity was viewed as being criminal. If you were a Christian, you were contrary to the laws of the Roman Empire. Uh, if you persisted to live out your faith, you were punished. There was laws that were you know, set up against uh, being a Christian. Being a Christian also you know, put you in trouble because uh, they used you as martyrs. Not a whole lot, but there was those persecutions in which Christians were killed for entertainment's sake. 
The charges brought upon Christians were atheism and anarchy. We were considered atheists because we didn't worship the other Roman gods. We only worship this one God uh, that actually we would say were, you know, three persons. And the anarchy came in that the Christians would not participate in the worship of the empire or the emperor, whoever it might be at that time. They refused to do that. You know, their expression was Jesus is Lord, which was completely contrary to the expression in the Roman Empire, Caesar is Lord. So they were considered to be people who went contrary to the law of the land. And so they suffered for that. And the other side was also there was a misunderstanding about the presence of Jesus at their communion service. You know, when the Romans heard that this is the body and blood of Jesus, they considered Christians to be cannibalistic. And so the reputation of Christians in the Roman Empire was very dangerous. You took your life in, hand, in hands. You took the opportunity that you could lose your possessions, your job, uh, as a, even as, a, in those days, a slave to uh, another person. You were, could have been killed. So in that context, 1 Peter, or Peter the Apostle, writes to these Christians and says, Here's how you need to deal with this. Now, he's not talking about, you know, just a bad, grumpy day and you have an argument with your spouse or you know, a problem with your boss. And he's talking about life and death stuff. And he says, you know, here's how I want you to deal with it. And let me recap those things that he said. He said, first off, remember that we're called, chosen, and we're prepared for this people prepared to deal with these things he says first off love one another as if your life depended on it have self-control whatever is honorable whatever is just whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is commendable excellent if anything is worth praise think on those things be sober-minded submit to one another love one another show hospitality Use your gifts. Speak as if you're speaking to God. Serve as if you're serving to God. And therefore, finally, do good. This is how Peter wanted the early Christians to deal with a culture that was after them, that was against them, that was putting them in a difficult situation. And so, you know, he said, you need to go out and do good. Now, when I started this series, for me, it was really about the, the pandemic and, you know, and the shutdown and all the things that we had to change in our lives with stores closing and wearing face masks and, you know, the social distance and not being able and many people were laid off and businesses were, you know, struggling. All those problems that we were facing and asking ourselves, how do I deal with this? How do I live with this? And again, Peter's advice was the same. Even in a pandemic, to do good, to love one another, to show hospitality, all those things that I talked about over and over again. And I still feel that that was a powerful uh, reminder, guidance for us on how to deal with the problems, the disappointments, the frustrations that we have been dealing with for the last eight weeks and maybe even longer, hopefully not. But, um, I have to say that based on the events of this past week or so, I realize that the words of 1 Peter are even more important for us to hear and to live out. And I know all of us know what we're talking about in, in the struggles that have been faced in the last week. And I have to be very personally honest with you about this. I don't know of a time except for maybe when the World Trade Center was attacked that I have felt more grieved than I have during this past week. I truly have felt deeply grieved at the things that we as a nation are experiencing right now. I grieve for the black community who are so fearful of their lives every day, who are fearful of the police. I don't understand that but they do. 
They're so fearful of just life and living in this country. American people of color who fear each day. Who have a, a system that holds them back. That keeps them at where they're at. And I, again, like I said, I don't completely understand that whole system. I don't live in that. But when you see the, the stories, when you hear the stories, it, it has to, it grieves me. For example, my daughter Sandy, as you know, uh, works at a mansion in Washington, D.C., worth millions and millions of dollars. She's on the landscaping crew, and uh, it's a full time, you know, she works full time, but there's like a crew of five people who work on this mansion, landscaping with the vegetables and the flowers and doing other staff work around that that mansion. It's a gorgeous place. Don and I got to see it this Christmas. Uh, Mr. Adams, who owns it, um, obviously did very well in his business. Uh, in his garage, this is one of three houses that he owns and one of three garages that he owns. In his garage, he has a Bentley, an Austin Martin, and a Range Rover, and a Lincoln Navigator. We're really not sure why he has a Lincoln Navigator in the collection of his cars, but he does. We think it's the work truck. Uh, that he uses. But he has these three cars, and these three cars need servicing, you know, quite often, and they have to go to the, the particular dealer, and the staff gets to drive, you know, the opportunity to drive one of these cars to get service. I would love to be just on that staff to drive the Bentley to the Bentley dealer. <laughs> I think that would be one of the awesome things, you know, perks of that job. But Sandy has a co-worker who absolutely refuses to drive the Bentley or the Austin Martin or the Range Rover to the service agent because he's black. He knows from past experience that if he's seen driving a Bentley or an Austin Martin, he will be stopped by the police and will be questioned. And particularly if he's driving a Bentley that he doesn't own but somebody else owns, he knows that he's going to be in trouble from past experiences. That is a very small and simple fear. And it's a fear that I can't comprehend. But it's a fear that our brothers and sisters of color deal with every day. So I certainly grieve at seeing what is happening with them. But I also I grieve for our police officers, who for the vast majority are great people who serve our communities as public servants, who go into it with the right attitude that they're taking care of us and our needs. They're protecting us. They're helping us. You know, I, one of the first experiences I've had with the New Wilmington Police is they, uh, they, call, they came over and said, uh, your door was unlocked. I didn't lock the door one night. Sorry. Actually, it's been a couple nights. Um, but they come over and, you know, they say, hey, we checked it out. Everything's fine. I mean, they are public servants. This past week, I, I called the chief up to make sure that we weren't violating any zoning laws and needed a permit for doing this today. And I, you know, thanked him for his service. The vast majority of our police officers do a wonderful job. They know what it means to be a public servant. And I grieve because we're a small, small minority of people. They take advantage of that authority. And it seems to happen over and over again that just a small handful of people are ruining the reputation of a lot of other people. So I grieve for what is happening in our police force, the attitudes that continue and struggle with the way in which it affects our nation. But what really gripped me this week that caused me the most grief is that seeing our politicians using the Bible as a prop. Not only President Trump, who stood in front of St. John's Church holding up the A Bible, not his Bible, and then Nancy uh, Peloso taking her, taking a Bible, I would say again, and using it to try to outdo each other in some kind of competition. That really struck a chord with me. 
Because the Bible has never been intended to use as one, as a prop. But more importantly, to be used as a symbol of divisiveness, of domination, of control over one group over another. That struck really hard at me. And I don't understand why we as a nation have become so divisive. Why there are such mean accusations and angry words exchanged because you vote Democrat or you vote Republican. Why we have become so antagonistic with each other to the point that some people even hate the other side. You know, we have become a country of us versus them. And them is anybody who might be of different color, might be in a different career, might be voted a different way, live in a different place. And it's become almost a hatred in some cases. There is no us in them. There is just us. And I just find that during this past week, for Peter's words are powerful. Peter's words on how we in deal with these kind of issues, I think, are important for us to recall. What does he remind us to do? Love one another as if your life depend on it. Is that something you saw on the news this week? Did you see self-control? Did you see justice, purity, love, excellence? Something the praise worthy. Did you see sober mindedness? Did you see people submitting to one another, loving one another, showing hospitality, using your gifts, speaking as if you were speaking to God and using God's strength in doing good? Those seem to be attitudes that we don't see a lot, and yet those were the attitudes that changed the world in the early church, that changed the Roman culture, that helped the church to become the body of Christ in the world then, and I believe even today. So Peter tells us finally in that great phrase that I love that, you know, in the love and the care of the creator, to do good. And so the question I think we have to ask in all those categories is what does it mean for us today to do good? And you know, in some ways it's very simple. It's not very complicated. And there are some complicated systems that need to be worked on. But in the same way, there are some very simple ways I mean, all of us, I'm sure, have a friend who is outside our circle, a friend who is maybe of color. Have we ever talked to them about the fears they might have and the situations that they encounter that are different than ours? This is a conversation that we can have. That's just one little step of being good. Have you ever had a conversation with a police officer that you weren't trying to get out of a ticket? that you were just had a conversation with them to see what their lives are like, what they needed in their career, to see them more as somebody who wears a uniform and carries a gun. And I think also we need to expect more from our politicians, both sides of the aisle, that rather than divisiveness and name calling that we call them to be sober-minded, to live in excellence, to do the things that Peter calls us to be and do. Those are just small, simple things that I think we can call. There are certainly bigger things that we all can be about and do. Because again, what worries me is that we are living in a time in which we have become a divisive place, a place that 
looks for separation rather than unity. Looks for doing bad instead of doing good. And I think that when Paul calls us to do good, that good ultimately, I think, has been summed up really well by what uh, President George Bush wrote in response to all this. He says, this will require constant and courageous and cre creative effort. That sentence right there, I think, is powerful. That to do good, to change what's going on in our nation and even within our church, requires constant, courageous, and creative effort. We serve our neighbors best when we try to understand their experiences. We love our neighbors as ourselves when we treat them as equals in both protection and compassion. There is a better way, the way of empathy and shared commitment, body action, and a peace rooted in justice. And I am confident that together Americans will choose a better way, George W. Bush. And I think also that the church here in Neshanik and the church in America can also do and live out that better way in Jesus Christ to do good wherever we might be. Let's pray. Lord God, we come before you and we continue to pray for our nation and for uh, the, the problems that we face. Uh, it's not uncommon in the, around the world. We certainly pray about the, the racism that is a part of us. We pray for the divisions that flare up between us and them and forget about that we are together. We pray that your spirit will guide us as a church, that even in the churches uh, that we are part of, in our denominations, we live with division and divisiveness rather than unity. Lord, teach us, show us how we can do good in all aspects of our lives so that we may bring glory and honor to your name today. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. So let's, uh, we have, uh, we're going to have four ushers go by with plates to, to collect your offering if you have them. And, um, and then Vanessa's going to sing a, a special song for us. Good. All right. One second before he begins, um, as you're picking up your offering, I just wanted to greet you this morning. And first of all, to let you know, um, you've all witnessed a miracle here and you don't even know it. Um, I don't have very much luck with chairs, but I, it is a miracle I have not fallen behind the stage. Every chair I've ever sat on outside, I've broken. So you got to see a miracle here this morning, but I wanted to tell you guys how really glad I am to see you finally, and not just to look into the lens of a camera. Um, it is a blessing for me to be able to be with you, to sing with you, and I say sing with you, not at you, we are singing together. And uh, you may notice my voice a little shaky at times because I was a little nervous in seeing you all this morning. But um, I just want you to be blessed and really be blessed by this song that I'm going to do for you right now.
that the Christ who was slain on the cross has the power to change lives today. Vanessa, if you didn't know that, that was applause afterwards. We're not used to that. Thank you. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the, the belief that we have in Jesus that transforms our lives, transforms uh, our relationships, and ultimately has changed the world. Continue to bless us, Lord, with the gifts that you give to us, the gifts that have been brought forward here today and the gifts of our very lives, that we will continue to do good each and every day through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have two more songs, uh, Lamb of God and Love Through Me, and the songs are in your insert.
you pray with me? Lord, we just sung a, a great verse. Love through me, love through me. Oh, Lord, love through me. Somewhere, somebody needs your love today. Oh, Lord, love through me. Lord, may we go from here willing to do that with a stranger, with our family, with a friend, in some way that goes deeper into our souls and our spirit as we glorify you, Jesus Christ, Father and Son, our God. Amen. Thank you.